I made a three string guitar. I really wanted to make a cigar box guitar for a while, but I don't have any empty cigar boxes lying around. So since I was making the body from scratch, I said, why make a box when I can make whatever shape I want? So stick around to see how I did it. I started off by making the body from some scrap four by fours I had lying around. I cleaned them up on the table saw and then glued them up to make a big blink. Now I'm not sure if this was the best way to make the body, but it ended up working in the end. I prepared some templates by printing out a picture on the computer that you could download on my website if you want. And then I rough cut it to shape on the bandsaw and then cleaned it up to the line on the bench top sander. This template is for the outside of the guitar body and I could just double side tape to my work piece and follow along with a pattern bit on the router and then I would have the perfect shape. But I also went ahead and I made another one on my CNC that's for the inside of the guitar body. It's just slightly smaller. I made this on a CNC, but you can make it on your bandsaw, scroll saw, jigsaw, whatever you got. So let's move on. I traced the lines of the template onto the blank that I have, both the inside template and the outside template, and then I brought it to the drill press to hog out the middle. Now, this took a pretty long time, and it was taking a long time with the larger bit because you have to go slower with the larger bit, so I swapped out to the smaller one, and it went a lot quicker. I just needed to do a little cleanup work with the chisel, and I had to make sure to get all the little pointy parts um, chiseled off because I was going to be putting a router inside there. The Makita router that I'm going to use has a template guide that it comes with, which is awesome, but it was just a little bit too long for the um, hardboard that I was using, so I had to double it up, and I used double-sided tape, and I was ready to go. Since there was still a lot of material left over, I had to make really shallow passes, so I just kept lowering the bit slightly and then taking more passes until finally I couldn't go any further with the bit that I had, so I switched over to a pattern bit, and still that bit did not reach the bottom of the box. So I took it back to the drill press and I put it in a smaller Forstner bed and tried to get as close to the edges as I possibly could. And I think that did a really good job of cleaning it up. Again, it just needed a little chisel work to clean it up. Now the back of the box was still just a little bit too thick. I was aiming for 3 16 So instead of making everything deeper, I decided to just cut off a little bit at the back. And I did this by starting off a resaw on the table saw and then finishing it off with my hand saw. This took a lot of work, but at the end it was really rewarding. <sighs> now it was time to work on the outside. So I cleaned up as much as I possibly could on my crosscut sled at the table saw and anything that I couldn't reach, I did on the bandsaw. At this point, it was starting to really look like a guitar, so an air guitar solo was a requirement. And to clean up those cuts, I used a pattern bit on my router with a template again. I was really nervous about routing this super thin material, and I should have been, especially because the grain was running in different directions. You can see over here, I should have done a climb cut to accommodate for the grain direction. But don't worry, just a little CA glue and some accelerator spray, and I was able to put it back into place and move on. I finished cleaning up that area with a climb cut and that router bit wasn't long enough to reach the bottom so I took it to the router table with a flush cut trim bit, this time being really careful about the grain direction. After it was all cleaned up, I was able to take off the template to reveal my super thin walled guitar body box. Now it was time to make the top of the box. I lost a lot of the footage, but basically I cleaned it up on the table saw and then I did the same resawing method that I used to cut off the bottom part of the box to get a really thin piece. It was also about 3 16 thin. And now I double side taped the template and cut it close to the template and then used the router to clean it up to its final shape. On to the neck. I found a scrap piece of maple that was long enough, put the body template and the fret template on and then added four inches for the headstock. I cut it to length at the miter saw and then I trimmed it to its final width at the table saw an inch and a half on both sides to make it an inch and a half square. The neck is supposed to be flush with the body without the fretboard. So I turned the body upside down and marked the bottom and then I flipped it back over to mark the sides and then I got to cutting. I used a little handsaw to make the straight cuts down the sides and then switched over to a coping saw to cut out the bottom to cut out the little notch. The neck didn't fit in right away, so I just needed to clean it up by using some files until it finally fit nice and snug. Since the bottom of the guitar body is angled, I needed to cut the bottom of the neck at the miter saw and then it fit perfectly into the box and it sat flush against the end. But now I needed to notch out a space in the neck so the top would sit flush onto the body. I used a combination square to get the thickness of the guitar top and then brought that measurement over to the router table 
and then I hogged away at that material by pushing the fence back a little bit. By the last cut, I had to make sure to keep all the pressure on the back of the neck so that it didn't fall forward. Then I cleaned up the end of that cut with a chisel and now the top is completely flush with the neck. Because I'm using a 25 inch scale length, I marked 25 inches from where the nut is going to be and that is where the bridge will go. Then I marked a half inch up from the bridge, an inch down from where the top of the body meets the neck, and two inches down from the bridge. And I'm going to be removing a little bit of this material so that the top of the guitar body has room to vibrate and it creates more sound. Cutting off the piece on the end was really easy. I just used some hand tools and it came right off. I took off like a really small amount, like probably a 16th. And then to hog out the middle section, I decided to use the depth stop on my miter saw and that worked out really well. I just cleaned it up with some files afterwards even though nobody will ever see it. And after I got that all cleaned up, I finished shaping the neck. I did the bulk of the waist removal at the bandsaw and I also angled the headstock. I just took one of my other guitars and I kind of guessed the angle and it seemed to work out pretty well. Then I cleaned up all those rough lines with this Japanese rasp. I love using this thing. Because I didn't cut off the top of the headstock, I was able to make it flat so that I can use a half inch roundover bit at the router table to ease all the edges and help me with the shaping of the neck. After I finished shaping the neck with sandpaper and all that, I got to working on the fretboard. I trimmed down the scrap piece of white oak to be an inch and a half wide, and then I cut it again to be a quarter inch thick. In order to help me cut the slots for the frets, I made this little jig. It's just three pieces of scraps that are glued and nailed together. And I took a square to make sure that the kerf that I was cutting was completely perpendicular. And then I did a test cut to see if it was square and it was. So I moved on to actually marking the frets. You could download this template on my website. Just be sure to start making your lines at the bottom line of the nut and then just bring it on down to the fretboard. You could also double side tape it, do whatever you want. And then I used my jig to cut all the slots and this worked out really great. The only thing that I would do differently next time is that I would make some sort of depth stop on this saw. I thought it was a good idea to finish the fretboard before assembling it, but it really wasn't. I ended up having to touch it up too much, so don't do that. And now the fretboard is ready to be glued onto the neck. I taped up the sides so that I wouldn't have to clean up the glue squeeze out so much, which actually worked out really well. I was so nervous about this glue up. You really just have to make sure that it is completely straight against the neck. I also put some scrap pieces there so that I wouldn't damage the fretboard or the back of the neck. After I got it out of the clamps, it just looked so much like a guitar neck that I just had to do another air guitar solo. Now, I have never done any sort of fretwork in my life before, and the thought of it was actually really daunting, but it really wasn't hard. It was tedious, but it wasn't hard at all. I just had to bang the frets in place and cut them as close to the fretboard as I possibly could. For the nut, I made a zero fret by using a jumbo fret, and this creates a perfect action height. Now I started the tedious work of making the frets smooth and flat. I thought a Dremel would work, but it didn't. It kind of made the, the frets come loose. So I had to do it all by hand, and you just want to make it so that the frets are all smooth and you're not touching them as you run your finger along. Next, I needed to level the frets. I did this by putting some sticky back sandpaper on a flat surface, and one of them was just like super high, and I should have sanded down the fretboard before I put the frets in, and that would have avoided that situation. Then because I sanded some of those frets, they were flat, and I needed to make them round again, and then I needed to round over all the edges with a file. It was just a lot of work to do this. It wasn't hard, it was just tedious. After all the fret work was done, I marked holes for the fret markers and the side dots. By using the depth stop on the drill press, I was able to get the perfect depth for the fret markers, and by using some painter's tape on my drill, I was able to get a pretty good depth for the side dots as well. For the side dots, I used these little wire nails, and I think the end result looks super cool. I bang them all into place using a scrap, and then finish them off with a nail set to get them perfectly flush with the end of the fretboard. I used some super glue before binging the fret markers into place and the neck was done. I used a hole saw at the drill press to make a sound hole for the top. And from previous experience with my guitars, my kids like to put their toys in the hole. So I created a Lego stopper by cutting a screen and super gluing it to the back of the sound hole. This also makes the sound hole look like it's a speaker and I think it looks really cool. I am very happy that I did this. 
I just trimmed it up and moved on to drilling the holes for the volume knob and the audio jack. I needed to make a jack plate to cover that last hole, so I made it out of scrap maple and I shaped it using sandpaper. It was so thin that when I went to drill the hole, it cracked in half, so I made another one off camera. I was also concerned with how thin the guitar body was, so I used this wood hardener. It's kind of like a really thin epoxy, and I'm not sure if this was a good idea or not, but it seemed to feel harder and stronger. Now it was time to assemble everything. I made these riser blocks to put underneath the neck and I epoxied them into place since the bottom was a little bit rough and I felt like it would fill in any gaps and I used my brad nailer to clamp it into place. Then I pre-drilled and countersunk the holes in the neck before attaching it to the body. I put on some glue on those riser blocks I put on earlier and then I screwed it into place. I'm using a pre-wired piezo pickup, so I needed to notch out a place for the piezo to sit right under the bridge. I used a Forstner bit and then used a chisel to chisel out the area where all those wires are. Once the piezo was sitting nice and flat, I used some hot glue to keep it in place. And then I used some more hot glue on top of it to secure it even more, put a Dave & Buster's card on top, and then put the soundboard on top and then I was able to take off the card and it was really secured in there. And then I went and used some hot glue on the rest of the wire so nothing was rattling around inside. Once everything was secured inside, it was time to glue on the top. I only used glue and I haven't had an issue, but if I do, I'll put on some nails to help secure it a little bit better. While that was drying, I drilled the holes for the tuning pegs and I made sure to use a good brad point bit so I didn't have any tear out. I took it out of the clamps and I think I can officially stop saying air guitar solo because this thing actually looks like a guitar. In order for it to actually play, it needs some strings. So I'm gonna be drilling through the body and the strings are gonna be coming up through the back. I marked the holes about an inch and a half down from where the bridge is going to be and then I brought it to the drill press. I drilled all three holes, but I wasn't able to get all the way through the body. So in order to make sure that I was drilling on the exact same location, I used a locator pin by putting a, another drill bit that was the same size as the drill bit that was in my drill press in a scrap piece of MDF. And then I locked it into place and then I could put the guitar body onto the locator pin and then I knew that it was drilling in the same exact location on the other side. Does that make sense? Now the holes were going all the way through the body and I tested to put a string through and it worked. Moving on. I drilled slightly bigger holes on both the top and the bottom to accept the string ferrules. And the last thing to do was to make the floating bridge. I put a quarter on the frets and put a straight edge onto the nut to figure out the height that I needed to cut for the floating bridge. After I cut it to about two inches wide, I then made a cut in the center of it to accept a jumbo fret. And then I shaped it with some sandpaper and I stained it black. All the building was done and it was time for finish. I spray painted the back of the body black and I used a water-based finish on the front so that it wouldn't yellow so much. I put the ferrules into place, I put the volume knob onto place, and I screwed in the audio jack and audio jack plate. I made sure to pre-drill the holes in the jack plate slightly larger than the screws that I was using so that the super thin wood wouldn't split. Don't ask me how I know that. I made sure to brand the back and then I put in the tuning pegs. I also pre-drilled the holes for these tuning pegs before I put these screws in. I flipped it over to the other side and put in the washers and the nuts for the tuning pegs and then it was time to string it up. And this was so exciting. I put the floating bridge into place and then I played around with all the intonation and all that jazz and it was all done. I am so happy with how this came out. I really can't believe that I made this. It's just so unique looking and I can't believe it works. I'm just really so excited about this right now. So um, if you are interested in making guitars, I think that this is definitely an excellent start. I think because the neck, you don't have a truss rod and it's not curved on the fretboard, I think it's really approachable and really easy to do. And Cigar Box Guitar is definitely the way to go. You should definitely check out Del Puckett's videos. I'll put a link to his channel below. He is just a font of information and that's where I learned everything to make this. So definitely go check out those videos. Some things that I um, made, not mistakes, but things I would do differently next time. Um, someone on Instagram 
suggested that after I glued the fretboard onto the neck, I should have sanded the fretboard, the fretboard flat. That way my frets would all be even after I put that in. Because I had to sand down the frets a little bit too much that I wanted to. Um, and that probably would have been a really good idea. The way that I made the box was also just like a little bit crazy. So I don't know if it was the best way to do it. Maybe I should have um, made some forms and did some like thin lamination, bent lamination kind of thing or glued, um, glued up a box like with these angles and then sanded in the curves. I really don't know what would be a better way. This was a little bit difficult. Um, uh, the stain that I used on the fretboard also, I don't know if I like the black stain. I think maybe because I used oak, I could have done something like an oxidizing stain like steel wool and vinegar that would seep in a little bit because right now I think it's going to rub off. Um, also the tuning pegs, I put them in the wrong places. <laughs> so, um, so these two should really be one on top, one on the bottom, and this one on this side should be in the middle. Um, it still works the way that it is right now. It's just um, they're too close together over here. So when I tune one, the other one moves a little bit, um, a little bit annoying, but something to do differently for next time. And um, what else? Oh, Del Puckett, in his videos, he kind of suggests um, making the angle of the box a little bit backwards to make it higher action for strumming over here. And I think that that would be really good because I see like I'm hitting the, the box a little bit. Um, and I think that is it. I'm just really happy. If you want to make something like this, you totally don't have to make a shape like this. It's really just the idea of making a box or, or using a box or making anything you want and turning it into a guitar. So, um, you want to hear it now, I assume. <laughs> um, here it is unplugged. It's a lot of sound coming out of there. That's an open G tuning. Like, really happy with the sound that's coming out of there. Um, and I'm going to plug it in now, but please bear with me. I've only had it for a day, so um, don't judge. Um, let's do this. Okay, so I think that's enough playing for now. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Peace.